What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Ask Live Lean TV. Cheers, guys. <laughs> We're back to another whatever you want to ask. No theme to this episode, just ask us anything kind of show. That's right. So uh, if you guys checked out our video the other day on what happened to our YouTube channel, um, we got a lot of feedback on a few things. Some of you like the longer videos, some of you don't like the longer videos. So I suggest to everybody who doesn't like the longer videos like these here, like these 30 minute Q and A shows, like you like the idea of it, but you just think 30 minutes is too long. Go listen on the podcast. So the great thing about the podcast is it's a secondary passive style of learning. So you can be working out, you can be walking your dog, you can be cleaning the dishes, have it in your ear so you don't necessarily have to sit and watch here on YouTube. Not that we don't like you watching on YouTube as well, but we're just giving you options. Like just because you can't sit down for 30 minutes, don't think you can't consume the content. The podcast is the place for you to be. You might have to make a shorter video explaining that because people who don't want to watch long videos probably aren't watching yeah. this video. <laughs> well, maybe I should go, I'll probably go into all those comments on that video and just kind of tell them about yeah. the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But um, so guys, so shout out to the podcast. Thank you guys for listening. If you haven't yet rated and reviewed the show over on the podcast, if you're listening on Spotify or on iTunes or on Apple Podcasts, wherever, make sure you do that. We really appreciate it. And tag us over on Instagram at TV with that comment, that review, and we'll try to hook you up with a nice little something, something. So we collected your <clears> questions <throat> on yesterday on at Live Lean TV on Instagram, and we got so many, so many, like, <laughs> a, like probably the most we've ever got. So we're not going to be able to get to all of them because we have to just quickly film while our kids are napping. So we'll do as many as we can today. Um, so sorry if your question didn't make it, but. You know, we don't have enough time for all of them. So thanks and we're, for leaving. And here. we're going to start off with two questions. We're going to put these ones up at the front. We're not going to say why we're putting this up in the front. Maybe you guys will know if you see them or maybe you just didn't watch that What Happened to My YouTube channel to see why these questions are being answered first. <laughs> so if you're not watching our show, guys, our YouTube show, go turn those you're notifications on. Insider secrets. That's right. You're missing kind of these insider <laughs> nuances. Okay. So first question is from... Trisha MB12 says, for toning, heavier weights and less reps or more weights and lighter weights? Hashtag YouTube. Uh, okay, hint, hint. Um, so, okay. I feel like toning can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, right? Because a lot of people think of toning as like weight loss, right? Sometimes people, when they think of toning, they, they're thinking I need to lose weight, meaning I need to tone up. And other people think toning means like building muscle. So I think it depends on what you really mean by toning and like dig a little bit deeper on that goal. Like does your body need firmer muscles, bigger muscles? Like do you need weight loss? Like what is it that you're really trying to achieve? Because I think toning can be like a little vague or yeah. confusing, right? So um, you'll know how you want to lift once you kind of like clarify what your goal is. Um, if you're following one of our fat loss programs, usually the rep ranges will be higher compared to like one of our strength programs. So, but you know, clarify what you mean by higher. That's vague too. That's true. Um, I would say in the 12 to 15 rep per set, per set range is what I consider like higher reps up to 20. And then low reps would be like six to eight. Yeah, I typically, I think, just like you said, toning is such a generic term. We don't really know what that means, but... The, I think it usually means fat loss. The but. best way for overall body composition, so that's burning fat while also maintaining, potentially building lean muscle, which is going to make you look lean. It's going to make you, you know, give look you those... Yeah. It's going to make you look toned. Yeah. Most people think they just need to lose fat and they're going to look toned. Well, if you it's lose fat, it, yeah. you're just going to be a skinnier, potentially fat person because you don't have the muscle definition to show that tone. Right. And as a female, so many females are afraid, and we say this a million times, that they're going to get bulky if they lift weights. Right. But... From a female perspective, the hormone testosterone is just not produced enough in your body to give you that bulky look that men have. Um, so, you know, the females out there who look bulky are doing are looking that way because A, they want to look that way and B, they potentially could be taking certain chemicals to make them look that way, like they're competing or something. So, um, 
But I have to say, like, as a female who's experienced um, many different training programs myself, and, and I've done so many different training styles, I do, if you guys remember this video, I did a uh, one here on YouTube about how to get slim versus bulky, because I feel like when I first started fitness, I went through different phases of just getting skinny fat, and then uh, I was like, oh, I need to put on muscle. So then I did a muscle building plan, and then I felt like I was bulky. So I do think that, you know, your training style is going to affect your results and your outcome and certain style of training is going to give you a more like toned looking result versus others so that's why we developed our body recomp plans recomposition yeah. means you're not necessarily losing or gaining weight you're staying the same weight but you're changing your composition yeah. so that's what we mean by recomp and so yeah if you follow like our like his afterburn program or my formula for women the style of training you find in there is what we found works the best for and like so-called yeah, toning. And, and the rep schemes are all over the place. So yeah. I guess that's the conclusion is that there's no money spot no. for one thing. Like, yes, there's some that may be better than others. For instance, like lifting 12 reps is probably better than lifting one rep for, yeah. for toning. Right. But, you know, you can get great results from all over the place um, with and, the rep schemes. Yeah, and also I think it's it's a little more complicated that than that because you can't totally just say 12 is. reps. Like yeah. you have to feel challenged. Like your muscle needs a certain amount of tension, a certain amount of challenge mm -hmm. in order to get the result you're seeking. So yeah, the rep ranges, it's not like there's a magic number, 12, 15. None yeah. of these numbers are magic. It's all about the muscle tension and like the workout as a whole and really like your whole system as a whole like how you're feeding yourself yeah. like nutrition really comes so, into play so the bottom line is the There's this really is, no answer this is no the bottom line is the answer is the program <laughs> that you're following so right. this is the structure behind the program so yeah. the exercise selection the rep range the rest periods the time under tension yeah. the, the nutrition plan with it all those things are going to help you get that tone physique that you want it's now up to you to go work that plan. Yeah, so, it's not as simple as just like heavier or lighter. It's yeah. like there's way more detail. So go take the Live Lean Body quiz if you haven't yet. That's going to put you in the right program based on these four questions we're going to ask you during that quiz. And it's going to be like, okay, based on your answers, this is the program to get you those results. So go take that quiz. We'll yeah. link it down below. All right, next question from Ann Kakv on Instagram mm -hmm. says, Jessica, what was harder for you? Oh, well, know. it's it's A and C. Anka, okay, maybe Anka uh -huh. B. <laughs> Jessica, what was harder for you, first trimester of pregnancy or postpartum? Oh. Hashtag YouTube. Um, I'm gonna say first trimester of pregnancy was hard for me, hard, way harder than postpartum for me for both times. And the reason is because I felt so fatigued. Remember, like especially with Kyla, I think on my first pregnancy, the first trimester just knocked me out. Do you remember that? Yeah. I would like be in bed for half the day. And there were so many days when I just didn't feel like working out. I was just completely I don't think it was that exhausted. Bad. Not every day, but there were some days and like it was definitely like the you first get, trimester was you a little struggle. Hair here on your nose. Oh, thanks. Man. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Maybe an eyelash. Oh, oh. Blow. Oh, good. Did luck. you make a witch? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. So anyway, um like, as you guys have seen, I've had, like, pretty smooth postpartum recoveries. I feel, like, really lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel like, you know, recovering easily postpartum has so much to do with what you do during the pregnancy and especially before. Like, we keep talking about this. Like, I was very fit going into both pregnancies, which I really think helped me in the recovery and the postpartum. Um, but, yeah, I mean, both of the, those phases are hard in their own ways. Like... I don't want to act like everything's so easy, you know, because I get that a lot. Everyone's telling me, well, you make pregnancy and motherhood like look so easy. It's not easy. Like I show you the highlights of it. Yeah. I've had my own struggles too, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I would say if I had to choose which was harder, probably be the first trimester. Okay. Next question from DDV Balance says, what is the best macro percentage for fat loss? Okay. Um, so typically people lose more fat when they reduce their carbs. I think from what I've seen from being, from having so many years of experience coaching clients and also trying things on myself, I feel like fat loss is typically easier but, with a low carb. But plan. let's first but. put it out there. The most important thing is calories. Mm -hmm, definitely. So for fat loss, for weight loss, calories is king. So mm -hmm. you meaning you need to be in a calorie deficit you know, Which burning more calories than you're consuming. So once Definitely. we got that box checked off, yeah. now let's look at the macronutrients and what are 
those calories made of proteins fats and carbs yeah but that's why i think a low carb plan is so um efficient or effective for people because usually people are um like just spiking their hunger even more right. by the type of carbs they're eating it's like you guys know that feeling when you eat something really carby then you feel like super lethargic and then an hour later you're like starving again it's like carbs they digest really quickly it's, compared to proteins and fats it's the blood sugar so yeah it, it messes with your insulin it messes with your hunger i feel like it it leaves you like craving more yeah. and uh so that's why it's so much harder for people to keep their calories in check when they're eating a lot of carbs yeah. so when you take the carbs down it's like keeping your calories in check becomes easier so yeah. that's the main reason yeah so the one the plan the plan that i always kind of start people off with or recommend is and i tried this on myself i first started at 40 protein 40 carbs 20 fat and what happened to me was the exact same thing that you yeah, just said. I got hungry all the time, about, yeah. lethargic and everything. So yeah. then I flipped the script once I started to read more into what the paleo diet is. And so I switched my macros to 40% protein, 40% fat, and 20% carbs. And once I did that, things just got better um, because the two macronutrients, protein and fat, do what you just, to the opposite of what you just said. Keep so full. it keeps yeah. you full and it helps maintain your energy levels throughout the day. Plus, the, the, the fat is great for your hormones. So many people are still afraid of fat even though we're in the year 2019. Um, if anything, my macros have switched to add in more fat and, and less protein. So to answer your question, I would start you off at 40 protein, 20 carbs, 40 fat, and then just manipulate it there. But sometimes you even start people at 33, 33, 33. 33. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention is even a 40, 20, 40 is pretty darn balanced compared to some other extreme diets you might see where people do like 80% carbs or yeah. 80, 75% fats or something. Like I definitely believe that a balanced macro macronutrient ratio is best just from a hormonal standpoint, from a longevity standpoint. Like you're just going to have an easier time in life if you're not, if you're not deprivating like one piece of your diet. So I do think like a 40, 20, 40 is mostly balanced, but just slightly lower in carb, a little higher in fats yeah. and protein. So that's why it's really effective for people. And when you now. said low carb, like you said, most people respond well from yeah. a fat loss perspective, low carb. Again, low carb is a generic term. What does it low is. carb yeah. actually mean? Exactly. So I don't you typically use the term low carb. I use the term lower carb. Yeah. Now, because low carb, when people hear that, is like, oh, I can never have carbs again. Right. They feel like that means no carbs. No but carbs. that's not what we that's said. That's not like, what we said. You have to listen more closely. 20% of your calories coming from carbs is not zero. It's sufficient carbs. Yeah. Like it really is yeah. if you break it out and you're not just a carb monster and you're mm -hmm. eating whole foods, you're preparing your foods. Exactly. It's definitely a, a, a sustainable way of eating. That's not to say that it is the best or the only macronutrient ratio for fat loss. Like you can have success on... Um, other different ratios. You have to try and see Test. what works for your body. And that's what I talk about a lot in our course, Live Lean Way, is like finding what's best for you because it doesn't matter what works for us. If it doesn't work for you, you know, you really have to do you and figure out what's sustainable for the long term and what your body responds to. I always like to talk about it like what percentage uh, split does your body like? Yeah. You know, because it's not about what you like, it's what does your body like? Like you want to see changes happen in your body, you have to listen to your body and you'll see the results happening that's how you'll know eat to live don't live to eat right and like pay attention to the cues like if you pay attention and you really observe what's going on with the changes you know and you yep. take progress pictures every so often the information just becomes so clear like yeah. you can't wonder anymore because you will know okay next question from Farah tonga says if i don't have a kitchen scale how can i know my portion size or count calories Okay. So um, I would say, why don't you have, I mean, a kitchen, <laughs> yeah. this is the thing, like a kitchen scale, you they're can really literally affordable. get at the grocery yeah. store for $10. Yeah. They're, like, yeah. They're easy to come by too. It, I feel like a lot of stores carry them. Yeah. Them. Or order it online. Like yeah. the one I think we have was $10, $15. We have like, two of them. You yeah. buy it one time, you never think about a $15 expense again, and you have it to actually start your PhD in nutrition where you start weighing foods and you start to get yeah. a sense of what does everything mean. So and the batteries that, last forever. I don't think I've ever <laughs> lost the batteries. Like you can use it forever. So that's what I would say to that question is just, 
it, it's like make the little effort. Yeah, make the effort to yeah. do it, the ten dollar effort to do it. Now, if for some reason you just can't do that, um, there, I think you in, do you include in living way like portion sizes by hand, like and estimations. Estimations. Yeah. We definitely have like a you know estimation method where you can use your hand and like it's like the palm of your hand is how big your protein should be. Your thumb is how big your like serving of fat should be, like stuff like that. But that is also it's just too a little vague, you know, vague. because you can really still like the palm of your hand. It's like, well, how tall, right? The, like, and this <laughs> is the type of thing that you that you graduate into. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the first thing you do is you get a scale and you do, like I said, you go through nutrition school by doing this for maybe a few six to eight weeks, measuring food. So then you can eyeball things like you're talking about, where you can know, oh, this is. Yeah. Uh, this is going to get me the amount of protein I need. This will get me the amount of carbs I need and fats. Like Even one day can like blow your mind. Yeah. Like if you just measured your portions out for one day, we don't, you would learn so much. We don't measure yeah. our food anymore, no. but we went through that time, like that pain period of nutrition yeah. Yeah. to learn this. And now we're on a lifestyle for the rest of our life where we don't have to and we can sustain. And I mean, if we wanted to gain a bunch of muscle or lose a lot of fat, maybe we would yeah. start to measure a bit again. But mm -hmm. when you're in that maintenance phase, you don't need to necessarily do that because you've already done it and you can look at a plate and you can tell. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. Just go out and buy a $10, $15 scale and get to work. Yeah, guesswork is the answer to that. If you don't have a scale, you can use guesswork, but guesswork is going to be a lot less accurate than actual weighing. All right, next question from P. Rab Hatchakari says, how to get rid of belly fat? Ma'am, please suggest me some diet and exercises. Okay. Oh, the. Uh, That's the pretty. The thousandth time yeah. of asking how to get rid of belly fat. <laughs> um, so give we, give we, the high. I mean, like. Yeah. Let's not spend too much time. This is just such a generic question that I feel like we've answered millions of times. So. I feel like the answer I want to say is like subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch every single video. Or the easier thing to do know. is yeah. warp speed that where you, we have a thousand videos. You don't have to watch every video. Get on a program that we've done. Like yeah. everything we talk about in these videos, we then put it into a step by step blueprint plan of action so that you have it on your phone and you just go and execute it. So you work the plan. Like that is the speed, that is the fast approach to living lean is to follow a plan. So mm -hmm. that's gonna give you the nutrition plan that you're looking for to lose belly fat. That's gonna give you the exercises that you need to do. That's gonna give you the rest periods, the rep sets, the um, you know the time under tension. Everything you need mm -hmm. is in there. So if you wanna lose belly fat, go take that quiz and follow the program. Like There's a millions of things that we can tell you on how to lose belly fat, but the step-by-step no -step blueprint is already there. Yeah, and I think the really important thing here, the takeaway is like don't focus necessarily on the belly fat, but focus on building a lean body like that's what you want to shift your focus to instead of like focusing on the problem focus on what you do want to create and start taking the action steps to create yeah. that and once you create a lean body you won't have belly fat anymore okay and i'm going to answer your, your question directly and then you can take that for what it's worth like exercises squats deadlifts presses overhead presses, the main multi-joint compound movements. That's gonna burn belly fat. Nutrition, in a Nutrition, slight deficit, healthy and, foods. Eat in a deficit, yeah. eat whole foods, plants, animals, seeds, nuts, one ingredient foods. Make sure you're so, well hydrated, make sure you're sleeping well. So I may be a little yeah. animated here like yeah. answering this, but based on that answer, like what are you gonna do with that? Like there's no plan for you. Like it's just it's, like it's- Yeah, it's a bunch of random information. It's in one year, yeah. it's out the other. There's no step-by-step yeah. -step plan on how do you actually execute that now. And that's what our programs do. So that's why I'm so passionate about getting people on the programs. Yeah. We could talk about, you know, all the theories about how to lose belly fat till we're blue in the face, but unless you actually start taking daily actions, yeah. it's not going to go anywhere. All right. I am a champion 3573. Brad, how did you get over the breakup with your ex-wife going through a bad breakup? My oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Honestly, dude, that I'm like getting kind of like <laughs> the chills. just even going back to that, thinking about that. Like, so yeah, I was married um, and I got divorced back in 2012. And you can go back to my uh, the YouTube channel. I, I actually have documented a lot of it, talked about it. Um, shared my divorce story, like what happened. Fortunately for me, it was a very um, amicable. amicable breakup where we just knew that we 
both were going separate ways. And um, I mean, I have no regrets whatsoever. But honestly, I, I mean, I'm not an expert in it, but it's tough. It's like you're gonna go through this tough speed. I think what I would say is it's gonna get better. But it's gonna get better when you actually take the steps to make it better. So yes, take some time. Being in a funk is that's just a part of life when you go through this. But just maybe set a date like I'm gonna, you know, be in a funk for until one week. And then after that, I'm gonna get my stuff together. I'm gonna like go to the gym. I'm gonna like prepare my a lot of times people can use these down falls as a way to just keep rising to make themselves better to read better books to yeah. you know absorb knowledge to actually take action and improve your body and improve your life get out there talk to strangers like those t types of things so use this it's it's kind of like what we we're talking about the e plus r equals o so mm -hmm. the events in your life plus the reactions to those events create your outcomes in life so the event being you're potentially going through a divorce how you react to that is what your outcome is gonna be. So I'll just kind of leave you with that mindset towards it. But trust me, bro, like I've been through it. It's tough when it's going on, but I wouldn't change a thing in the world right now, especially yeah. like with you in my life, Kyla and Cody and Bruno mm -hmm. and everything that we've created wouldn't have happened if I stayed in that unhappy marriage. Yeah. And we still love your ex-wife, by the way. She's like my, my friend now. Yeah, I, so, so I mean, I, I, if your situation's not as clean as what mine was, I'm sure it's gonna be even tougher, but honestly, it's yeah. gonna get better, buddy. Just keep... The other thing is like, I know this is hard to hear when you're going through it, but there's always like, it takes two in a relationship. And when a relationship fails to succeed, it's not just the fault of one per usually. I mean, is this too much, too bold of a statement? No. Unless one well, person like cheated on the other, I don't know. But I'm just saying like usually a breakup is due to both people maybe um, not being their best self. So you can like look yeah. at your shortcomings and use it as a personal growth True. opportunity. And, and even if it's not, even if you were the best dude in the world and she went out and cheated, yeah. not, I don't know the situation, but she cheated on you. Is that really somebody you want to be with? Like that's not the type of people you want in your inner circle, especially to be spending the majority of your time with if someone cheats on you. So breakups hurt no matter what happened. Yeah. I think no matter who's like the victim, like who, what happened, what the story is, breakups are going to hurt. So just let yourself hurt, go through the grieving process. And then, yeah, like he said, like turn it around to make something good out of it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I did. Yeah. Like where, where, I, ha where I was in my that's life when that it. happened, like my business was nowhere. I was making yeah. no money. I was on the yes. outside with a lot of my friends and yes. like it just turned things around. You absolutely used it as like a life changing yeah, I was like, like, platform. Yeah. It's me, it's mm -hmm. now or never right now. Yeah. Okay, next one from Melissa's Health Fitness says, any advice on how to lose body fat while using a contraceptive implant? Ooh, I've never used one. I'm gonna have to back out on this one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might have to pass on answering that because I don't know. I've never used one. And yeah, it's like I think it's outside of my scope of knowledge. So what is a contraceptive implant? It's like an IUD that, that uh, it's like a it's and, a form of birth control. And yeah. is it it affects your hormones? Some of them do. I've heard that there are ones that are non hormonal. Um, but I honestly don't know how that would affect body fat. Yeah. I don't well, know anything about it. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we'll uh, keep oh, moving on. Yeah. We're, we're not experts in all things contraceptives and implants, but... I, uh, yeah. I mean, my advice, I guess, would be to do everything else you would do to lose fat and, you know, regardless of the implant. And yeah. then if you're having trouble, then I would say go talk to That's your doctor about point. the trouble. Yeah. Like know? if everything yeah. else is on point and you're yeah. not losing fat, then you could point to this as being, this is what's stopping you. and. Maybe talk to your doctor about like alternative ways to yeah. alternative ways. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, next question from Love Zuzu says, "What are your thoughts on fasting cardio?" Mm, I used to do fasted cardio all the time. Me too. Yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't because I, I thought too. that it was going to be some magic fat loss bullet. It was because I felt better yeah. like doing cardio without a heavy tummy you know what I mean like yeah. when you're running or whatever and you feel yeah you're jostling around that didn't feel good so I used to do it on purpose fasted just so I would feel lighter and yeah, yeah. I did a full video on this recently uh, probably a few months ago on is fasted cardio better than fueled cardio so I'm gonna link that down below and that gives you my insights and my experiences doing both yeah um, so you know, rather than getting too in depth with that and repeating what I just said there, so we can get to more questions, yeah. this is a situation where we've answered a full video on this. Yeah. So we'll we'll point you towards that to check it out. But my just the high level thing, 
either or works. It's what works best for what you. you like the best. Yeah, and how you perform. Mm -hmm. So, uh, next question from Cali Mama Forty Five. Can I get a badass body at the age of forty-eight? You're still oh, a young pup. Only at 48. forty-eight. Oh my gosh, you guys, think about it. If you live to be I know, right? ninety, I, like I, forty-eight is a child. Like, <laughs> I love that mindset. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, yes, things get a little more challenging as you age. Like, there's, yeah. there's no debating that. Right. Um, but if you look at yourself, you're forty-eight years old. Life expectancy for females is, let's just say, 80. 80 yeah. So you still have 32 more years to put into, like to implement the things that we're teaching you every episode here. So 32 years. <laughs> like I always started my journey um, pretty much consistently maybe 12, 13 years ago. I so you have th almost three times that amount of time to put this stuff to yeah. work. <laughs> I love it. Somebody sent me a video this morning, you guys, of a 72-year-old female bodybuilder who didn't start bodybuilding yeah. until she was 59. Have I you heard that, that story? She was 59 when she first picked up her first weight. It's 11 more years And old. now she's freaking shredded yeah. at 72. <laughs> so, like, I look at this question, I'm like, girl, 48 ain't nothing. Like, I can't believe you even think that that would be like a barrier. You know, well, you've got to get that mindset out and well, realize you are still so young. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why you think that because a lot of people watching this who, who potentially could be 48 or over would think that. Yeah, it's a normal mindset. It's a normal mindset, yeah. but mm -hmm. you got to get over that mindset to know that if somebody else your age that looks like you has accomplished what you want to accomplish, then you can possible. do the exact same yeah. thing. Absolutely. And yeah, you're going to have a badass body and I can't wait to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, let's go on here. Uh, Abby Lopez, 42. When is the Live Lean TV family coming to Chicago, Chi Town? Chicago. I've been once. Haven't you been? I've been to Chicago. I yeah, love Chicago. We've each been in the past. We don't have any plans as of right now. It's just so traveling hard. Traveling is for... tough with toddlers, you guys. It's not. It's not the most pleasant. <laughs> yeah, like the amount the amount that we traveled like two, half, three years ago versus now is like night and day. Especially just a lot. yeah, but. Um, Chicago is a dope a city yeah. and you know, I would, I just remember when I went to Chicago, I had a lot of fun there. Like it was mm -hmm. just, it's a huge city. I love huge cities. Yeah. I, I would love to go back, maybe check out a Bulls Raptors game sometime when I'm there, but uh, no upcoming plans. I think in the future, like when the kids are a little older and it's easier to travel with them, we'll probably start traveling more. Oh, death. But I can't see that being within the next like two to five years. Well, maybe I might go for some business or something, yeah. but other than that, but not all maybe you might yet. go as well. <laughs> okay, next one from Christine Madrid 15. I want to work on building my glutes. How can I use glute hypertrophy? Oh, how can, how can I using glute hypertrophy? Yeah. Um, build a butt extreme girl. You got to get on it. I'm actually on week nine of the program right now as we speak, which is the last week and I'm loving the results. And like so many other people, so many other women, it's a women's program, have like grown their glutes significantly. And like, it's amazing. I mean, when I say grow, I don't mean like actually growing the size, not like I have to had to buy, buy bigger jeans or anything like that. When I mean grow, I mean like growing the muscle. So you're kind of like recomposing your butt, making it firmer, tighter, more lifted. And so, yeah, that is like a, that's the perfect glute program. Yeah. In my opinion, I love it. So, well, I noticed the butt is... You noticed, haven't you? Oh, totally. Yeah. I know when I'm getting dressed, sometimes he's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we'll link that uh, Build a Butt Extreme program down below. So would you recommend they start with Build a Butt, the original, and then move on to Build a Butt Extreme? To be honest, like I only recommend Build a Butt Original if you don't go to the gym and you have no equipment to work with and you need like a home friendly, no equipment yeah. workout. Other than that, I definitely recommend, <clears throat> even if you're a beginner, to do Build a Butt Extreme instead because you're going to get more noticeable results. And just because it's a better program, guys, like Build a Butt I created so long ago, it doesn't have videos that comes with it. Like I, you know, not to say anything bad about that program. I mean, the workouts are still great and everything, but I just think Build a Butt Extreme is not just a better program, but you'll also get better results from it. All right, guys, I think I hear the kitties waking up, so we're going to call that <laughs> over. a show that's life of yeah. us. <laughs> Kids come first. Yep. Um, so um, we appreciate your questions, though. Yeah. Thank you so much for asking more than we could even get in one show. Yeah, we we have... can always count on you guys to provide the content for this, and we're grateful. Yeah, we have so many more questions here, guys. So we apologize for not getting to them all. Um, so yeah, so make sure you're also following us on Instagram if you're not there 
area at Live Lean TV because we go on our Instagram stories. That's how these questions are getting answered. You'll see a story tag with a question on it. That's when you type it in and then we get your question and we answer it on the show. So guys, thank you for listening on the podcast. Thank you for watching on here on YouTube. Make sure you smash that like button down below. Leave a comment and what? Mm-hmm. And what? And share the video and <laughs> keep. I'm in like boxing mode right now. Living lean. Living lean. Boy. Thank <laughs> you.